Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome to our Factorio Pyanodons playthrough. I've gotten a little burnt out of space exploration, so we're going to try the next hardest thing, or even the harder thing, which is Pyanodons. I have a little bit of experience with it. Uh, I haven't done Alien Life all that much, but I've played the other mods quite a bit. Uh, I wanted to show you the map generation settings that I'm using, just because this can be a bit overwhelming if it's your first time trying it. So. Mainly, I've decreased the frequency on all of the rocks, which are essentially ways that you can get ores, not from ore patches, but from giant rocks, and you use these different kinds of extractors. Um, I've kept most of the frequency and richness the same for other things, and size is not changed a whole lot. A little bit bigger for molybdenite, because those patches can be kind of small, and I've reduced the frequency on Niobium a little bit because it tends to show up more than I want it to. And I increased the frequency on Bitumen Seep because that's something that I know I'm going to need. Though I haven't played since they added that in. Uh, I also increased the richness on that quite a bit just to make sure I have enough. And then Sulfur, I increased the frequency a little bit because I always like to make sure I have some Sulfur Veins. But it looks like they've removed tar. I think that's replaced with bitumen seep now. So it'll be interesting to see how all those things affect the gameplay. I have looked at this seed a little bit already just to make sure it has um, all of the ores that I need within a reasonable distance. So hopefully I won't have to get trains too early and I can just use belts. But without any further ado, let's jump into the game. Okay, here we are, our normal cutscene, and as you can see, we are surrounded by ores already. Um, our little home base here has a little bit of everything. We've got some chromium, raw coal, titanium, quartz, oh, I need to turn off Informatron. Tin, borax, lead, stone, copper, iron, rare earth ore, aluminum and salt and phosphate so there is a little bit of everything and hopefully this will be enough i i increased the richness a ton i am using resource spawner overhaul and let me show you real quick the mods that i'm using we'll just save ianodons a So I'm using all the same mods for quality of life that I was using before, but we've added in Factorissimo and Deadlocks Stacking. I think those are the main two that are different. That way we can, as much as possible, uh, make our lives a little easier. So I'll just scroll through this slowly. We've got LTN. Module Inserter is a new one that I want to try out. Time Tools will allow us to speed up the early game just because... It'll be a little boring for you guys because we're going to need lots of waiting around. Um, I don't think I've added anything else as far as I can remember. I don't know why robot attrition is still here. I thought I took that off, so I'll have to make a couple of those changes. But we want to make our lives as easy as possible because this mod pack is absolutely insane with the small amount of experience I've had with it. I've played Pyanodons without Alien Life before, all the way through Blue Science, and that has been quite an undertaking. So, the early game, though, is somewhat familiar. You still need burner mining drills on... where's my coal? It's up here. And you'll notice I'm walking uh, pretty fast already. I did create some bonuses to the beginning for quality of life research. I'm already walking at 150% speed. Crafting at 200% speed can reach a little farther and had some bonus inventory slots because, again, you need every bit of help you can get with early Pyanodons. So I'm not going to make my life too difficult. Okay, so we'll get some raw coal mining. And raw coal is interesting. The way this works in Pyanodons is you have these resources that you need to 
process to get the normal resources so that you have to set up these processing chains to get coal out of raw coal. So raw coal has a smaller fuel value, but you can see it has mining time of 50%. So it mines faster. It's easy to get a lot of. And then you'll also notice that I have, I didn't mean to favorite that recipe. How do I undo that? There we go. Um, you'll also see I have deadlock stacking selected. So I can stack coal into, and my stacking is set to eight. So whenever I stack items, they become eight times as dense. And that will allow me to create a bus where I never need more than one lane of anything, essentially. Okay, so I've got some coal. I'm going to start with some iron mining. Where's my iron? Down here. And we'll need stone, copper, and iron, just like normal as our main things at the beginning. And I don't actually have enough stone furnaces, so... We're going to set up a few. I'm going to make some iron chests just so I don't have to deal with steel chests. We're going to set up a few stone miners. Just to collect some stone here. And I don't have alt mode turned on. That's why I was getting confused. So, if you haven't heard of Pyanodons, it is well known as one of the potentially hardest mod packs, or at least longest, in terms of the number of intermediates you have to deal with. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way I can see... Yeah, here you can see all the items. Or no, these are just the ones we've unlocked, I think. Yeah, this is not everything. There are just an absurd amount of intermediates that you need. You know, space, space exploration was very complicated in terms of the logistics and setting up, uh, being able to go to other planets and all the circuits and logistics, but Pyanodons is just like, oh, you want red circuits? You have to craft hundreds of items to get there. So we will end up needing all kinds of, all kinds of things. So I'm actually crafting too many burner drills, kind of on autopilot here. I want to be crafting more stone furnaces. So that I can actually get some iron smelting going. One of the things I really like about Pyanodons, and the same was true for space exploration, is as you tech up, you get more efficient recipes. So iron starts out and you need eight ore per plate, which is kind of ridiculous, right? I mean, Normally you need one, but as you get higher and higher tiers of technology for iron ore processing, you can unlock more complicated processing chains that will get you closer to maybe, I don't know, one iron plate per ore, and then eventually you get even more than one. So it's pretty sweet in that regards that you can essentially keep reworking old production chains to become more and more efficient. Um, yeah, and I have Factorissimo, and I plan on doing a little bit of cheating, which, you know, obviously Factorissimo kind of already is cheating in a small way. It doesn't make the logistics easier, but it does make, you know, you don't have to use as many belts, you can fit a lot more base in a small space, and that will help us a little bit in our journey uh, along with deadlocks. But I also plan on potentially cheating in some bots earlier than I should be able to get them. Uh, we'll, we'll see if I end up doing that or not. I might I might go with more of a bus model, but... Yeah, we need more burner mining drills. Because the speed here is 15 per minute. We need 0.8. Yeah, so we could handle up to three drills per... But we'll just do two for the sake of an easier design here. And we will fill these with coal. Yeah, so all together, we're not even getting close to one plate per second from that. And we'll need to get copper going soon, because copper, I believe, is used for small parts. Is that right? Yeah. So small parts are used in pretty much everything. I also considered, and you guys can let me know what you think in the comments if you really think I should do this, but I considered using, there's a mod called Super Generous Recipes, 
where you can multiply the outputs of recipes by things or divide the inputs to make things. It's almost like free productivity, which would kind of, I mean, obviously completely break the balance of the game, but it could be a fun experiment. I don't know if I totally want to do that or not. That's why I haven't turned it on yet. But the, the most enticing reason I might use that mod isn't for the productivity, but for the crafting speed. So one option is to actually use the crafting speed uh, modification to split all of the building's crafting speeds in half, or even in a fourth. So everything would craft four times as fast, or twice as fast, or even just 50% faster. And the reason I might be interested in doing that is Pyanodons is already complicated enough, and then when you have to do big builds on top of that, it can get a bit crazy. So if I doubled all of the crafting speeds, that would essentially reduce the power needs of my base by two. So it would make power a little bit easier because everything crafts twice as fast. And then it would also reduce the size of the builds that I need to do to get the throughput that I want. Um, but it wouldn't make logistics easier and it wouldn't make productivity better. So let me know in the comments if you if you like that idea or if you'd rather just have me play the normal way in Pyanodons. Um, I'm, I'm willing to try either. Because I think doubling the crafting speed, even though it's for sure cheating, I don't know if it would actually make the game that much easier. And I'm just going to craft a couple of these destructive distillation columns. I know I will need them, so I'm just going to get ahead a little bit, start crafting those. That's how we process raw coal into coal. And let's go ahead and look at what we need for red science, because it's kind of mind-blowing. So we need to add a recipe. Oh, they changed hell mod. Oh dear, that's scary. Uh, science. Automation science pack. So just to get one of these, we will need research centers. We'll need glassware. We don't have hot air yet, so we'll have to use all these inefficient recipes. We'll need rubber stoppers, which come from coal and latex. Coal we get from destructive distillation columns. We'll wait on that. Latex, we need a latex slab and steam. Latex slab needs sodium, alginate, creamy latex, and formic acid. You can see how this gets crazy pretty fast. Sodium alginate needs stone, limestone, and seaweed. Seaweed, I do believe we just make directly out of water. And then, let's see, creamy latex, we need limestone and sap. Sap we can make directly in a nursery out of sap seeds. No, that's making sap seeds. That's the extractor, so sap tree. How do I actually get sap? Maybe it's one of the disabled ones that kind of are hidden, where it just automatically makes it. Yeah, it's this one, sap extractor. And so then, okay, so we've got all that stuff. Then we need formic acid, which looks like the only way. I don't think we want disabled, we just want hidden. So that's iron, copper, carbon dioxide, and then we need carbon dioxide, which comes from coke. Coke comes from coal, I think. At least currently, it's the only way we can make it. And then we need glass, which comes from quartz ore. And then we need basic substrate. I mean, you can see how crazy this is getting. We need moss, which comes from carbon dioxide. You know, this is just crazy stuff. Um, and then we need cellulose, which comes from wood and limestone. We need incubated petri dish, which comes from a petri dish. That comes from petri dish and agar, and we need agar, which is also seaweed. So. I think we've mostly got things boiled down to the basics here. 
We do need our carbon dioxide to move down. But yeah, you can see how absolutely mentally insane one automation science pack is. Now, all of these megawatts are for sure off because some of these buildings, like you can put in modules and get better recipes. And so you don't worry about the, the specifics, kind of like in space exploration. It's best not to worry about what you may or may not want per second and it's best to just get things automated because you'll get better recipes for it later. And so your ratios will end up changing all the time. So I'm going to speed up the game a little bit here so I can mine these faster. Time tools is really nice. I've used it before, especially for C block. Sometimes when you're in C block, you're like, I just need the game to run for 30 minutes and get my iron plates and copper plates faster. So. Also, it I didn't mention this, but we are completely on peaceful mode, so there's no no biters, no pollution. That's kind of the recommended way to play Pyanodons. It's not balanced around biters. There's no additions to what biters do, so it's best to just turn them off and turn off pollution to save your save your processing speed. So I do want to get some power going. Because I can get belts and inserters, so we will craft some belts by hand. We will craft some boilers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll get power. And we will need some inserters. And I probably shouldn't have used that much iron on belts just yet because I'm going to need a bunch more burner mining drills and stone furnaces because we're going to need to completely cover this patch with drills and that still probably won't be enough iron plates because eight ore is just a horrible ratio but let me show you so iron plates so at first you can only, you know, make them from eight ore, but then as soon as you get this iron processing one, you can make it from processed iron and three processed iron comes from five ore. So you can see even just that upgrades you to a five to one ratio, which is almost twice as good. Um, and then you can also make molten iron and use borax and sand casting and then hot air to make a bunch of iron plates out of molten iron but I don't think you can make molten iron oh you can okay I'm not sure if at least the way it used to be is that the tier one of molten iron wasn't really worth it it was like a marginal increase for a ton of extra power so I usually ended up not doing that but again I've never played with alien life so the balance might be completely different with alien life turned on Okay, so we've got all these going. That's mining three ore per second. And then we want to get copper. So we'll get copper ore into a stone furnace. Give that a bunch of coal. And there we go. We've got our handcrafting automated, or I mean, our basic resources automated. Handcrafting we do not have automated. But now I can get some boilers going. And I'm going to try to put these out of the way. What is this? Oh, there's actually seaweed in the water. That's cool. I wonder if that actually is necessary and we we need to collect seaweed, and that will help us jumpstart the early game. I guess we'll find out. Uh, let's see. I do have nanobots still, but I will need to research them, so I can't use them just yet. Okay, and I need some power poles. Now I did get the, I think it's called Panadon's Pana I don't know, it's some sort of mod that makes the wire reach a little bit longer on small electric poles. At least I thought it 
Dude, that actually looks like the default. I'll have to check if that mod's working correctly. Because it is supposed to be a mod that increases the reach of power poles so that they can at least go over most of the big Pinedon's buildings. Kind of helps with the craziness. Oh, you can hit rotate and then keep going backwards. That's really cool. The Factorio 1.1 patch has really made some awesome changes. But for now, we are just going to take a chest, put our raw coal in it. And we still have Bob's suggestible inserters, as you can see. And I need a little bit of this coal to jumpstart. Oh, we need water. That's right. And I will need some plates for pipes. So I'll make some pipes. Single underground should do it. Of course, I don't have any of my hot wire items yet. Hey, there we go. We are producing power. We'll run power up. Make a bunch more power poles. We will use them. Because we'll want to move towards mining drills sooner rather than later and bussing things, but this early stage where you're just working on getting getting enough things to Automate science is pretty crazy. Okay, we'll start with one more copper and then we'll just I think we'll add iron until our iron's completely full. And there is another iron patch. You know, you can see it's revealed as they've generated. There's a lot more iron ore to the south that we can use if we run out of iron here. I'm gonna go grab some more raw coal. And duralumin is an interesting resource. That's a mixture of copper and aluminum, which is super expensive at first in terms of how many, but then you you end up, as usual, getting a cheaper recipe later. Okay, so now we want a second row here. Yeah, we're going to be using a lot of iron for this. Because one drill, 8.2 iron, means actually it's like 64 iron. Oh, I'm out of stone furnaces. We can make a bunch more of those. Those are still cheap, thankfully. Now, electric mining drills, they do require a lot of copper. So until I have more copper generation, I'm not going to worry about those. Because then we have to belt the iron and make a bunch of inserters. And so I think the return on investment currently is not good for electric mining drills. So this is where I'm going to speed up the game a little bit, just to help the rate of the video. Because I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes boring you. Okay. So let's go grab some more coal. Because we're definitely going to need that. We're starting to get a little bit better of a rate. The nice thing is these will keep mining as I go and do other projects and eventually we'll have probably more than we need because iron, the nice thing about pyanodons is they change the stack size. So most resources stack to 500, which is super handy. So one stack of iron is actually quite a lot. Okay. 
still need more. Burner Mining Drills. I'll always need more. But we've almost covered our little ore patch. Oh, I was confused on where all my stone furnaces were going. I forgot that you use them as an ingredient for the burner mining drills. So that's why I kept running out. Okay, there we go. And I think we've done it. I'm not going to worry about those two little iron spots. Or, yeah, get rid of those. And then we'll go... First we'll grab what we have, and I'll make a few more drills to collect coal. Because I'm not sure how much we'll need, but we'll drop all of this into these buildings. So those will run for a while. And now we've got 10 per second. So a little bit more than one plate per second. Finally going. And then we'll do a little bit more copper. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should be enough. Because we won't need as much copper, at least for now. And wood is something that we can grow later, but we have to get a decent amount of red science first, so we will be chopping down way more trees than we'd like to be chopping down in the early game. Okay, we need some more coal. Speed things up again. Alright. That should do it for a little while. So we've got copper, we've got iron, we've got raw coal. So we should be able to work towards potentially crafting some things. So, let's just kind of break down what we even need here. Because we need a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of menus that you gotta remember how to use. So can I even make hot air yet? Because that does help me with the glass. Looks like I can't. We need coal processing one, which we don't have. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Okay, that's weird that you can barrel hot air. I hadn't noticed that before. Okay, so we're just gonna have to make glassware, which requires molten glass and the stoppers. Molten glass is where? Oops. Molten. Here. Okay, so we'd make that directly out of quartz ore. And quartz ore, I believe we need a crystal mine, which needs a soil extractor. And a soil extractor needs tinned cable. So we need to start mining some tin and smelting some tin so that we can get tinned cable to make a soil extractor. And we'll need a few soil extractors because I believe that's how we get limestone, potentially. Yeah, that's how we get limestone. So limestone comes directly just kind of from the ground, from water. And we can have an infinite amount. But where is, so that's borax, quartz is up here, titanium, tin ore, here we go. So we'll need a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's right. Okay. So we need steam to mine ten. Which means we actually can't use the burner mining drills. So we'll do 
do that. Yeah, the wire reach doesn't look like it got upgraded. I'll have to check in on that. Okay. So how to get steam here. We don't have a way to manufacture water yet, because water wells are in the future. And Pyanodons actually has their own um, kind of water well feature, so I'm not going to be using the regular water wells just to stay consistent with the mod pack. So what I will be doing... Well, first we need to connect these with the pipe. Underground pipe. Could just pipe the steam from all the way down there, but that sounds like a lot of work. So we're just going to add another water pump and a bunch of undergrounds. Problem is trying to avoid all of this stuff. It's a very busy starting area. I think I'm honestly okay with going through. This is just lead, and we're not going to need that for a while. And by the time I need it, at least in large amounts, I can just make water wherever I need to. Okay. Attach all my corners here. Oh, right. We don't need water, though. We need steam. So here I can put a boiler. And then I'm going to flush water out of that system. Of course, I need more iron plates. And I'm fine with just leaving the game speed on two right now. It's not going to hurt anything. We don't have to worry about pollution or biters, so... That way we get more plates while we think. Is there still water in this? There we go. Okay. So we've got our steam running. Now I guess I should think about this. So they get 0.5 per second, which means each of these can use 5 steam per second. So then one boiler can make 60, which could then handle 12 miners. So we just need a chest with an inserter. Connect that to power. And let's grab some more coal. That should be enough for a while. Okay. And then we need our smelters. Stone furnaces, we already have quite a few. I think four should be enough for now. Always need more inserters, and then we'll just put this into a chest. Power that up. And then drop a bunch of coal into these. And there we go. And 10 is weird. It takes 40 and then smelts it into, I think, 4. I think it might be an even worse ratio. Yeah, 40 to 4. So it's a 10 to 1 ratio to start with. But it'll work. I'm just curious. Each of these needs 0.6 per second. Right, that one hasn't picked a recipe yet. But there we go, there's some tin plates. So, tin plates make us tinned cable, which I think is... I'll have to get used to all these new menus again. So regular copper cable's in there, but I think tin cable is... Oh, here it is. Pie Brawl Wars. So one tin cable requires one tin plate. So unfortunately, we will need quite a few tin plates for all that. 
But now we should be able to make a soil extractor. We can make two of them actually, which can get us crystal mines for quartz. And we'll need those. Okay. That's helpful. We'll drop a bunch more coal in there so that'll run for a long time. Okay, what next? Let's grab our iron. Okay, we need to drop all this coal in here. It's amazing, I still only was able to put 73 in each of those. But now we've got a decent amount of iron plates, and we can look at what our soil extractors can do. And I need more coal, of course, for the copper. Okay, grab some coal, and then we will drop that into our drills. Okay, so soil extractors, they need water, and they can currently make soil and limestone. Sounds about right. We'll just hook this up near our water supply. And for now, we'll just put that into a chest. I'm sure we'll build it somewhere sooner or later, but I think it's good to just build up a stockpile of these things so we can at least have them. And again, I will unashamedly use the trick of 90 degree inserters to have faster insertion. I'm completely fine with that. Because that makes 3.6 per second, this makes 0.4 per second, so... So that way we'll start building up limestone and start building up soil. I think we actually need two inserters for this one. Even then I'm not sure if that's keeping up, but that's the best I can do right now. Unless I did another chest. Soil stacks to a thousand, so I don't think I need, you know, 40,000 or 32,000 soil. So I'll, I'll stop that before it goes too crazy. And same thing with limestone. Okay, let's get rid of that copper. And what's next? So we do want to get glass, so let's get some more tin to make some quartz extractors. Crystal mines. You can see they're very expensive using a ton of our iron and copper, but I'll start with four. And then where's my quartz? It's over here to the left. And I need some more power poles. I'm sure I'll need some more inserters. And I'm gonna move the power around this because I'll need this fairly early. Salt is used in a lot of a lot of recipes. And this is a fairly small quartz patch, but I think I have another one nearby. Yeah, I have a giant one over here, so if we need more quartz per second, we will be able to get that. these mines are huge. Okay, of course I need more belts. And then we'll connect up the power. Let's go all the way to the side. Okay, so those each do one per second. And then I need to make molten glass first in a glassworks. And glassworks is this guy. Requires stone bricks. Oh yeah, I forgot kind of that stone bricks existed for a moment. We will need to 
Work on those. So what am I out of? I'm out of iron. Well, we should have plenty of that. Yeah, we'll get some stone bricks going. Let's start here. You know, it's nice with my doubled crafting speed and the game speed set to two. Everything crafts four times as fast, which is pretty sweet. Still need more coal. Okay, fill these guys up. And I wonder, stone bricks... Looks like it's just two. So, that's still the old recipe. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Which will be helpful if we want to pave... Pave the world. And I needed that for glassworks. So we'll make two of those. For now, I'm sure we'll need more. Glassworks are incredibly power hungry, and they need 10 megawatts of power, but they need liquid fuel. So. And we'll also be making petri dishes and glassware out of this. Oh, do I even need regular glass? Or anything right now. Glass. This is, yeah, 119 things. I probably shouldn't be looking at it that way. I might need some glass to make some of these facilities. So for seaweed crops, I only need what I already have. Sap extractor just needs soil. Moss farm. I will need some aluminum. I don't know if I'll need these nurseries, but those require some glass. And research centers require some glass. And so did those. Okay. So I will need glass. But let's start with molten glass. And we'll maybe process fuel over here where we have some space. So we'll make some more undergrounds and then some regular pipes. So at the beginning, we'll be using these destructive distillation columns to create coal gas and tar, both of which have a fuel value. And so we'll use, we'll try to store up our coal gas and tar, and then we'll use coal gas for a while to power the glassworks, and then we'll switch to tar once we have a bunch of extra tar. It can be a little bit of a pain. Okay. So that means we will need to run raw coal over there. Which means we'll need a bunch more transport belts. Okay. Looks like we're firing on all cylinders here. Let's grab some soil. And then this will just be inserted. What's the speed? 1.2 per second, so we'll need two inserters. And that's where molten glass will come out and probably just go into another glassworks. Though, I may need to rethink this. Because we'll need an underground here. To go into the next glassworks. And that can go over, I guess. And we need another inserter. Okay. So let's get a belt going. Our raw coal patch all the way over to here. It's easier to move fluids than solids, so we will place these up by this. And I have no idea how many I'll need, but we'll start with two processing raw coal. Those can deal with five per second. That's a lot. So 
five inserters will still not quite completely handle that, but it'll be close. Then we'll connect that up. We'll need some more electric mining drills. Handle that. And here we'll have coal, gas, and tar. Unfortunately, we don't have top up and overflow valves, which we really would like to use for this. I'm considering even cheating those in to my inventory just because, I don't know, it's kind of frustrating to deal with this otherwise. So we have two products, which is iron oxide and coal, so we will just need to put those on a belt or even just, I guess, into a chest to start with. And then we can also process coal into coke which gives us more tar, less coal gas. So we have 10 raw coal into three coal and then 10 regular coal into six coke. And then you can even process coke into more coal gas and tar, but a very small amount. So that's more just to, to get rid of coke if you need to. So then we will want to run tar into some sort of do we have any sort of containers for liquids? We have a gas vent, so we can vent the coal gas if we need to. But I don't think we have any sort of storage for liquids. Yeah, that's not for a little while. Fluid handling. We can get a sinkhole once we have steel, which is very useful. And then storage tanks is here. There are these special pyanodon storage tanks, which I like to use because they fit the theme. But yeah, you can see there's a lot of researches that are in this game. Um, I did keep the jetpack mod in, which should be fun at some point, and still got quality of life research. But yeah, we're still a ways away from science, so I'm not going to worry about this. And the, there you can see all the recipes for stacking items which shows you just how many items there are in this game. Okay, so let's get some mining going for raw coal. I'm just going to leave those burner guys going so that we can have kind of our own personal stock of coal to drop into things. So we'll go down and over. That'll mine seven per second, so we need a few more. I actually don't want that. We'll go onto the side there. Try to use the whole patch here. So there we go, 11 per second should be enough to fuel both of these full time, which will produce 60 coal gas and 30 tar, which are both only 200 kilojoules. So to run a glassworks for one second, we need 10 megajoules, which is 50 coal gas or tar. And we have no way to store those at the moment, so I'm going to do something that's really ugly. And I'm going to store my coal gas like this. And I can at least store a few thousand that way. And then we'll run that down. I need a bunch more pipes than I have, of course. that up. And there we go. We're at least getting some molten glass. And then for now I'll move this one into here. And I think I'll just make some regular glass first. Okay, so that's where it hooks up. Attach that. And we're already out of coal gas, you can see. And then tar. So 
So what we can do is kind of delete that and just change which connection we have available. But we have to flush that before we connect up the tar. Another option would be to just vent all the coal gas and only use tar, but then we're wasting a lot of potential fuel. Okay, so then we want to just put that in the chest. Okay, we at least have some glass, but it's very expensive to make in terms of power. And we are slowly beginning to process things. Tailings pond. Oh, that's right. We can make those. Perfect. So I can store the tar in a tailings pond for a long time. So we'll do that. Maybe down here. And then hook up the coal gas. Because tailings ponds can hold, I think, hundred up to 100,000. But we've run out of power. I'm guessing that's because I ran out of raw coal for the boilers. Excuse me. Okay. Yes, that does look like the case. Oh, I never hooked up this water here. There we go. That was part of the problem. Definitely running out of raw coal quickly in all of these miners. So I'm just going to put some in the miners. Furnaces use about half the amount of fuel that miners do. Okay, so we've got a little bit of glass. I don't know where I got that sap. I'm guessing that came from uh, trees. Maybe sometimes when you chop down trees. So yeah, you can see we're storing up a bunch of tar in these tailings ponds. Okay. So we've got glassworks. What else do we need? I think we need some of all of these things. Microorganism mine from a specific soil patch. I don't actually know what that is. We'll make one of everything we can. And I will need some aluminum, which needs something special to mine. Coal gas. So we'll need to route the coal gas down to there to mine aluminum as well. Okay, so microorganism mine literally just makes incubated petri dish and consumes electricity so i won't need that for now botanical nursery can make sap seeds out of sap which we have one of but i need five okay let's let's see if we can figure this out let's chop down some trees do i get, do I get sap from these once in a while I haven't gotten any so far. I mean, let's just check. Sap. It just looks like it comes from a sap extractor, which... To make a sap extractor... Oh, I can just make one. Being silly. Okay. Whoa. All plants and animal buildings require one or more copies of the wanted item to function. Craft the first version from codex and DNA samples, put them in the module slots. So I need a sap to make the sap. Only modules can be inserted into the slot. Oh, I need a sap tree. And to make a sap tree, I do need sap seeds. And to make sap seeds, I need sap. Okay, so I do need to jumpstart this with sap. Which, where did I get that first sap. It had to have been from trees. I mean, that's just the most... Re yeah, okay, there, I got one. So I guess I need to just chop down trees until I get enough sap. So 
that we've got one. Or I mean two. Don't want to chop down my power poles there. Looking at the expected resources on the side, I now see that both sap and sap seeds are possible drops from trees. We'll probably need all this wood anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. Yeah, so I got some sap seeds now. Three sap. Is five sap seeds enough for a tree? I think it is. It is. Okay, great. Uh, power, yes. Okay, so then once I have that tree, then this should start crafting. And it looks like I can put up to two trees in there. So the cool thing about Planetons Alien Life that makes it so unique is that for the organic things, the modules are the things themselves, and that increases, you can see the speed to 0.6, but then if I get another sap tree, then that'll be another 500% speed. But obviously sap trees can only go in these sap extractors, so it's kind of a cool system. I think it's really neat. Okay, so we need a bunch of sap. Because I think, yeah, we need five sap for just two sap seeds. So we'll let that run for a little while, now that it's going. And we need a bunch more raw coal for everything, as usual. Okay, we're going to slow this down, and I'm just going to drop all this coal in. Should last a good while, I hope. I do need more coal, though, for everything else, but... So we've still got plenty of soil, limestone, those are building up. We've got enough power. We've still got two and a half thousand coal for our steam for the tin. Now we have a bunch of tin plates. That's great. And it looks like we're running pretty well here. For all the basics, I will put some more coal in these guys. We will need a bunch more copper, actually. I should probably make more copper mines. We'll speed things up again. So now we need a bunch more coal for all that. And we'll make a few more for this raw coal. And then we can power all this up. what I don't want is to end up needing way more, way more copper than I have. Okay, so we've got a decent amount of glass. I think I'm going to switch this over to making some petri dishes. I don't know how many of those I'll need either, but I know I need them for the science. And then let's check on our sap. We should have enough now for another tree. I'm hoping. Maybe not quite. 
Yeah, we do. Okay. Because that'll make six. Change this recipe over. Okay. So, long recipe here. 45 seconds. And we're almost done. Bam. And now you can see this goes a lot faster. We're at plus 1,000% speed. So it's a pretty sweet system. I like it. And I don't know how much sap we'll need per automation science pack. Looks like 1.4 is the number. So 1.4. This is making 3.3 per minute. So you can see how we're going to need to scale things up quite a bit if we even want one science per second. But that's how Pyanodons is. So let's also take a look at... Can't do moss farms yet, so we'll do... We'll do a couple seaweed crop facilities. So yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier where I'm tempted to just cut all the crafting times in half because then I won't need quite as many, you know, sap extractors and seaweed crop facilities. Look at how big these are. This is insane. This is why I'm going to be using Factory Simo. So I probably shouldn't put them there, actually. Put them more out of the way. Maybe over here. And then we need some pipes. I should probably just craft a hundred of those, because I will need them. And again, we'll, we'll just use a separate offshore pump. They're basically free. Of course, now I'm crafting too many pipes. I wish there was a priority handcraft button that you could click on something and it would put it at the front of your queue. Okay, so yeah, this this makes sense. That's why there's seaweed here is because we actually need seaweed to jumpstart it. Uh, we need to connect this up to power. Of course, we're out of power poles. So it looks like the basic crafting speed is 0.1. And it looks like we need or seaweed per 25 seconds. So that's an overall speed of, gosh, what is that? One per six seconds about. And then we'll take this and put it in as modules. So that ends up being crafting speed of 1.1, which is 10 per minute. Not a whole lot. How much did I need for this? Looks like 3.4 plus 1.7 plus 1.7. Hmm. So that's 6.8, if I'm doing my math correctly. Seaweed per. So yeah, that's enough for about three per minute right there. For now, we'll just put it in a chest, stock up a little bit. But I'm sure I will need to belt that around at some point. Okay, well, this seems like a good stopping point. I mean, we're not even going to get close to finishing Red Science in one episode, so I think I'm going to call it quits here. Um, let me know what you think in the comments in terms of whether you want me to go back to space exploration or you want me to just keep working on pyanodons. I know I've personally lost a little bit of interest in space exploration, but I could probably be convinced to do some more episodes if you guys were really enjoying that. Um, but I wanted to try something different and kind of explore something new. My favorite parts of mod packs are generally the first third to first half, especially on these really big ones, just because there's so much new stuff, so much interesting stuff, and it sometimes the late games for these mod packs can get pretty crazy. So also let me know what you think about doubling the speed of all recipes. Definitely cheating, but that could make our playthrough a bit faster and 
be able to get through a bit more content. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.